This is the Discovery Files podcast from the U.S. National Science Foundation. Off the coast of Maryland and Virginia, you'll find a pair of barrier islands, Assateek and Chincoteek, famous for their wild ponies. The native population of horses in North America died off during the ice ages of the Pleistocene era, and no one is quite sure how these horses got to the islands. One theory is that English settlers brought them there from the mainland to avoid tax liabilities. Another is a popular folktale that the horses are descended from the survivors of a shipwrecked Spanish galleon who managed to make it to shore where they've proliferated ever since. Supported in part by NSF, Nicola del Sol was working on his PhD at the University of Florida studying the introduction of cattle in the early Spanish colonies of the Americas when he found a clue that may solve the mystery of the Jincotic ponies. So I was studying that and was interested in knowing more about the origins of cattle. Where, where did they come from? What did they do with them? So I collected some samples for the DNA analysis. And one of these specimens, which was from a, an earlier collection, the, the site of, of uh, Puerto Real in Haiti, which is an early Spanish settlement founded in, uh, in the early 1500s. So it has been like excavated by a team of the Florida Museum of Natural History. There are enormous zooarchaeological collections from, from this site. And one of these specimens was small tooth fragment, which was uh, misidentified as a cow. How did you feel when you found this sample in with your cow samples? I was surprised at first because when I received the, the sequences, I looked at it and I was like, you know, right away I saw that something was off with this specimen. It didn't fit uh, quite well with uh, cow DNA. My second thought was what kind of other large mammal could be found in historical sites in the Caribbean. And first, um, my first thought was was horse. And, and, and then I compared this DNA with the horse DNA and, and I had a match. I, I told my, my advisor, my other, other uh, doctoral committee members about that, and they were like, "Hey, yeah, that's a that's a great find. I mean, let's 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 do something about it. Let's let's you know dig into it and, and try to to see what we can learn out of this uh, single you know horse DNA because it's you know we're talking about only one one sample, but but still, since it was the earliest DNA of a domestic horse in the the America so far. It was, you know, interesting in itself. What does this tooth teach us about the horse's introduction to the Americas? Since the very beginning of the European colonization of the Americas, they played a central role in that process. Modern horses were introduced uh, starting with, with the very first voyages of Columbus in the Western Hemisphere. And they played a, a central role in the colonial life, not, not only as, as a mode of transportation uh, and in the military, but also crucial for central economic activities such as cattle ranching. And that's, that's also where there is a link with my main topic of, of research. How does this sample connect to the wild ponies of Assateague and Chicoteague Islands? The specimen belongs to a group of horses that's called Haplogroup A, uh, which is found mostly in Central Asia and also in Southern Europe. So it corroborates what we know from the um, the historical documentation that early horses were brought from the Iberian Peninsula to the Caribbean. That was uh, interesting, but not completely surprising. The, the second thing that was uh, very surprising to us was the fact that when looking at more in details at what were their closest relatives among the modern horses, was that it closely related genetically with Shingotic ponies. At first, I didn't know what Shingotic ponies were, uh, so I started investigating a bit more. And then I, I learned about the stories about these ponies, about the, you know, the kind of mystery of their origins and uh, the folk stories and the, you know, the, the novel, uh, Misty of Shingotic. And then I started connecting the dots. I was like, wait, I mean, they, there is this uh, local story about these ponies that escaped uh, the shipwreck of a Spanish galleon. And then it all started to make sense, saying that the Shinkotic ponies might indeed descend from colonial Spanish horses. I'm not saying that our study 
fully endorses the local legends. But that's interesting to see that, you know, there there are some elements of, of truth behind that. And what our main takeaway of this close relation between colonial horses and chingotic ponies is that the Spanish were not only focusing their efforts and their explorations in the Caribbean and in Mexico at that time, but they were also exploring their options uh, in the Mid-Atlantic region. We know that, for example, there were some Spanish expeditions as soon as the 16th century in South Carolina. I think there, there are some Spanish forts in, in South Carolina, for example. And all of that kind of made more sense. It strongly supports that, you know, indeed the, the Spanish were also exploring these parts of the Americas. And uh, that, that's quite a fascinating takeaway. It's also um, when you look at the transatlantic routes that go back to Europe from the Caribbean, all of these, the ships had to travel along the eastern coast of, of the US, along Florida, maybe a bit more. So controlling sites such as St. Augustine was crucial to control the route back to Europe. In summary, while we don't know they survived any shipwrecks, we do know that they descend from horses the Spanish brought over. Yes, so what we can say about the, the history of horse in the Americas is quite interesting because so the ancestors of modern horses, the family that initially originated on the American continent during the Pliocene era, and around roughly 2.5 million years ago, they started spreading on other continents in Eurasia, for example. And like other animals, horses disappeared from the Americas during the last glaciation at the end of the Pleistocene, when we have like this great megafauna extinction on, on the American continent. At the same time, horses began to thrive on other continents, more specifically in Europe and Asia. There are very recent, very important genetic studies on horses that place their domestication around 4,000 years ago, in somewhere in Central Asia. And since then, they quickly became a crucial component of Eurasian societies. And since the very beginning of the European colonization of, of the, the Americas, they played a central role in that process. Modern horses were introduced very early on in the Caribbean, uh, starting with, with the very first voyages of Columbus in the Western Hemisphere. They were like crucial for colonial life, not, not only as, as a mode of transportation uh, and in the military, but also uh, central economic activities such as cattle ranching. And that's, that's also where there is a link with my main topic of research. And finally, why are archaeology and science important? What I find really interesting about archaeology is that it's at the crossroad of very different scientific disciplines. We're using tools from biology, from the study of materials to answer bigger anthropological questions. Science teaches you what is critical thinking, I think, how to look at the data, analyze it, and try to make sense of, out of it in a critical way. Uh, but always keeping in mind that you're looking for some sort of historical truth. Special thanks to Dr. Nicola Del Sol, Terence Affer Anderson, Adam Eggers, and Dina Headley. For the Discovery Files, I'm Nate Potker. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And if you like our program, consider leaving a review. Discover how the U.S. National Science Foundation is advancing research at nsf.gov.